I'm not here to teach you what to think, I'm here to teach you how to think. Here's a pretty good criteria to follow. Do you have a story that goes with it? A story representing sentimental value. A story representing a memory, a trip, an event. If you have no direct story of your life, directly related to the knick-knack, to the prop, to the chachka, get rid of it. With the gentleman who just asked the question, the snow globes, you have a story attached to every single snow globe. It makes it worth it to keep. But if you're going to the local store and you say, oh, look, they have a tiny model birdhouse and I think it's cute. I'm going to bring this home because I think it's cute. And you don't have any sentimental attachment to it. It doesn't remind you of anything that's significant in terms of a story that you want to tell. It's just a waste of space. Every item in your home, including a clock, don't just buy a clock. Maybe the clock has an image of a character that you adore. Maybe the clock looks like the clock from your old high school class that you, was your favorite class. Maybe the clock has uh, certain designs because it represents a sport that you're really good in. Let even your clock be something that represents you. Every inch of space that doesn't reflect the inner life of you is a waste of space. We have a question. So even if you're buying a clock for a particular room, the theme of the clock, if we can find one, should fit the theme of the room. Correct. Exactly. Brilliant. One of the questions that was asked to me off microphone was, how much money are you expected to spend? And my answer is this. Don't spend a lot of money on this. Spend as little as you can. All of the artwork that I used in my home space, I purchased at garage sales. I purchased at thrift stores. I would go and purchase it at discount outlets. The same type of image or portrait or painting that was selling for over $100, I would pay no more than $20 or $25 for. So there's a bit of a nick on the frame. So what? The biggest mistake you can make is to try and display things and try to get her attention through the amount of money you spend. The glow-in-the-dark stars I purchased off eBay for pennies a roll. I didn't spend very much money. I was buying it for the effect. If you're trying to impress her with the amount of money you spend, the only woman you can attract is one that wants your money, not you. When you choose a theme for a particular room, everything in that room should reflect that theme as well. As the gentleman uh, who was asking a question before pointed out, even if you buy a clock for that room, it should represent the theme. So if we're dealing with your bedroom, your bed sheets should be representative of the theme. If you're buying extra pillows for a room, the colors of the pillow should be reflective of the theme. If you're buying different types of artwork to reflect your sexuality, it still should match the theme of the room, whether in color, in style, something. Subliminal furnishings. When you look at some of the pictures that I'm going to show you, what I'm going to point out is that even how you arrange your furniture must be part of your seduction. In my living room, on the one side of the living room, I had a tall gray cabinet where I stored all of my liquor. On either side of the gray cabinet was a mini fridge. So you have something tall and long, and on either side of it, two really small things. For those of you who are very visual, you can probably visualize what that looks like. Yes, I specifically set it up so it would look like an erect penis. I'm not joking about this. The idea is that if she's going to consume any alcohol, because one of the mini fridges had wine and liquors that have to be refrigerated, the other mini fridge had beers 
and uh, juices to mix. And the hard liquor was in the tall gray cabinet in between. Now, on the other side of the living room was a nice, deep red 